up soon. Um, so there's a lot going on here. Um, these protests that are going on, you know, these people are just small business owners and they're fed up and they don't like some of the contradictory or, or hypocritical rules. Like if you're an affordable housing job, you can have 100 guys on a, uh, on a job site. But if you are a home builder, you can't have more than one guy working in a house. Or you can use a canoe or a kayak, but you can't use a motorboat in Michigan. Uh, or you can't go to your cabin in the Upper Peninsula in Michigan. Get away from the virus because 50% of the deaths in Michigan are in the Detroit metro area. Um, so it's really crazy what's going on. But there's hoax flyers out there. And the hoax flyers are from... Uh, they're at the protest and they're hanging on telephone poles and stuff. And they're saying, you know, come to the protest, bring your children, no need for social distancing. These are left wing plants and it's really disgusting. And the media is making it like these protesters don't care about their health. And it's hydroxychloroquine and its use. And guess what? He hired the same attorney, Deborah Katz, uh, who is the attorney. Uh, for Christine Blasey Ford during the Kavanaugh trials. So this is all funded out of the left and the Soros type operation and uh, we have to pay attention to this. Uh, and then in Montana, they're requiring armbands for shoppers, uh, which is insane. You know, this virus is going to create a whole, millions of people who are going to be pariahs just because they test positive for coronavirus. They're not going to be able to work. And now in New York, they want an army of tracking you know, with 35,000 people to track people and their contacts. There's a total unconstitutional operation going on, and we're very upset. I wanted to bring on our special guest with us today uh, for our second segment, and that is uh, John Lott. Um, he's the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center and the author, uh, most recently, of The War on Guns. So, John, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming on. It's, uh, you know, it's a busy news cycle. Uh, it's very important issues here. Um, but I think your article here uh, called Hypocrisy in New York Times Reporting on a COVID Skeptic's Death. Can you just give us a, a quick outline of what this story is about? Sure. Uh, this past weekend, the New York Times had an article where they were basically blaming Sean Hannity and Fox News for the death of... Uh, this bar owner, he had gone on a cruise on March 1st, and they had a quote from uh, one of his daughters, which said that uh, uh, Hannity had basically said, don't panic about the coronavirus, don't worry about it. And because of that show, uh, he had decided to go on the cruise and I guess, got the coronavirus. It's not completely clear whether he even got it on the cruise or afterwards, but he died from uh, getting that. Obviously, a tragic situation. Uh, there are a few problems, though, with the New York Times story. One is, person went on the cruise on March 1st, but it wasn't until March 8th that uh, Sean Hannity had the show that people were focusing on. Two, uh, while the New York Times discussed Hannity as talking about the virus as being a hoax, that's not what Hannity had said. Uh, you may remember uh, there are a lot of people in the media and what have you that were accusing Trump of saying that the virus was a hoax. What Trump had said was that um, the media coverage of it and the attacks on him and how he had handled it was the hoax. In fact, even liberal-leaning fact-check places like Political Facts said that it was false to go and say that Trump uh, had said that the virus was a hoax. And that's what Hannity was referring to. But probably the most bizarre thing about the whole story was that uh, the New York Times was blaming this person's death on Hannity's show, but the reporter who uh, had written the story actually three days before the person went on the cruise had uh, uh, a tweet that she had put out telling people don't panic, the deaths from this are greatly exaggerated, uh, even in China uh, they're getting things under control. Um, and so what she was accusing and attacking Handy for, she had actually done and, of course, if anybody had been reading the stories of the New York Times uh, over the preceding month, they would have gotten a number of headlines, which would have kind of taken people to task for, for panicking. Yeah, you know, so when Trump put the on China, 
uh, the New York Times had a number of pieces which was saying that the travel ban was completely unjustified, that, that Trump was making a big deal out of nothing. Yeah, I love when the uh, media is the victim of their own stuff, right? You know, the New York Times uh, was saying uh, that it wasn't a big deal. And then, you know, then they disagreed with Trump's travel ban, right? Uh, and I think the most significant thing here also is that you pointed out that Hannity's story was eight days after this guy left for the cruise, so it couldn't have been an inf uh, a deciding factor in this guy whether he should take the trip or not, right? Yeah, you'd think that would be something that they would have checked to begin with before they wrote the story. Uh, they ended up putting a, a change in the story a couple days later. Uh, not mentioning there that they had changed it or anything, didn't know no correction label there. They just inserted uh, in the middle of the story that uh, Hannity's people had said that, you know, this quote you're using occurred eight days after the person left on the cruise, uh, it completely gutting the story that was there. But, uh, you know, if, if anybody watched CNN this past weekend or MSNBC, I mean, this was all over the place. Uh, a lot of the media uh, nationwide was picking up on this story and attacking Fox, saying, look, uh, in fact, I have a quote from David Korn, uh, and I could have given a number of other ones from the editor of The New Yorker and others that were basically saying that uh, not only Trump, but Fox News had blood on their hands. Yeah, so uh, we're in the White House press pool here, and we follow all the campaigns, uh, the rallies, and uh, for Trump. And I was at the rallies when Trump said that Pelosi's attacks were a hoax. He wasn't calling the coronavirus a hoax, right? So I can attest to that firsthand. Um, and then, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking, as you point out, is always easy to do for these media outlets that Trump isn't responsible, right? Right, well, I mean, they don't hold themselves to the same standard that they're inaccurately even holding to Trump. So they're saying Trump was downplaying the virus. Well, you know, Trump was ahead of these guys in terms of having things like travel bans and, uh, you know, there's a whole long list of uh, actions that he took. Uh, when the New York Times and others were attacking him for doing what he was doing when he did it. And so if if Trump was downplaying it and he's responsible for deaths, uh, they're even worse. Right. So your article, I think, was brilliantly written. Um, you talk about, you know, all the, um, like, how this is a vicious cycle, how the media is, like, eating itself up. I, I really love this. Everybody uh, go find John Locke's article online here. Um, and I, I just think it's brilliantly written. Uh, John, can you tell us what the Crime Prevention Research Center does and tell us a little bit about your book? And where can they find it? Sure. Well, uh, we're basically a group of academics. I've been an academic most of my life. I've had positions at University of Chicago, the Wharton Business School, Stanford, Yale. And uh, I've done a lot of work on crime. Uh, I was chief economist at the United States Sentencing Commission. And we have other academics like Arthur Berg at Harvard, uh, Bill Landis, University of Chicago, other places. We know where the data is, and uh, we, when we see things in the media, we try to put things in the right context, and we do a lot of research on these issues. We've just done some recent research on mass public shootings, looking at the rate in the United States compared to the rest of the world, basically showing that while the world makes, well, the United States makes about 4.5 percent of the world population, we make up about 1% of the mass public shooters in the world. So we're way below the world average. We're below the average in a lot of European countries. Um, people in the United States just don't get media coverage of these attacks when they occur in other countries. So that's an example of the type of research that we do. What's your people website? can find it crimeresearch.org, crimeresearch.org, and... The op-ed that you just we were talking about, people can also find it there, too. Right, right. So, um, all right. John Lott, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, hopefully we'll have you on the future on the, when there's hot issues. And uh, just keep up the good work because people have to expose this for what it is. 
Well, thank you very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, John. Everybody, that was John Lott, the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center and the author, uh, most recently, of The War on Guns. Uh, go check it out on, uh, you know, I guess on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, wherever they're sold. So um, he's really uh, a sharp guy. And this article, it's called Hypocrisy in New York Times Reporting on a COVID Skeptic's Death. you got to read it. Uh, you know, the media is blaming Hannity and Trump on this guy taking a cruise. Um, uh, because they said it was, he said they said there was no big deal. Uh, but the problem is that Hannity Pelosi's attacks on him for not responding was a hoax, and that's the facts. Um, so, everybody, I want to welcome you um, to our next segment here in a couple of minutes. Uh, this is David Zier. You're watching Breaking Point on America's Voice News. Catch us on Dish Network channel 219, and go download the free Pluto TV app. Also, uh, 